everybody, it's Stasia Yetmer from CrochetOverAfter.com. Today I'm going to show you how to do something called a whip stitch join. And all that is is a type of sewing join used to put pieces of your project together. So whether you're making an afghan or a cardigan, <laughs> you can use this whip stitch seam to put the pieces together in a nice, um, secure way. So I'm going to grab a needle and my project and we'll get started. Alright, I'm going to show you how to do a whip stitch join on these two pieces of, or these two swatches. Usually you're going to use this on a motif that maybe has um, the stitching worked in the round so that you have your V's all the way around your project. This is only has V's on two sides, so we're just going to do this one side here. Um, you can whip stitch. Um, the sides of your project if you're working in rows. It's going to be the same thing. I'll show you right at the end how to do that in case you need to. But to begin our whip stitches, what you want to do is you want to line up your motifs so that your V's are right next to each other. And that way you can see your stitches easily and the loops that you need to work through. A whip stitch is really simple. Um, I like to work just through the outside loops. You can work through both loops um, whatever you want, but the outside loops, I'm going to show you the effect that it gives you um, when you work just through those. So what you do is just grab your, your hook, I'm sorry, your yarn on your needle and just put it through those two outside loops. Then what you do is go across and then stick your hook through the outside loops of the next two stitches and pull it tight. Go across, go through the outside two, so you're kind of just going around in a circle into each stitch that you come to. It's crossing over the top and then you're going through those two outside loops. So it's good to keep them if you have um, pinning, if you have a lot to sew together, if it's a really big seam, you can use like locking stitch markers every few stitches to hold it right in place so you don't have to try to guess and end up having a crooked seam. It's a pretty easy seam to take out if you do make it crooked and need to start it over. But once you get to the end, just pull it nice and tight. And you'll see that if this is worked in the green, it's almost invisible. And then on the front, all you have is this little bar that shows up. And this is why I left those seams unworked, those loops, because I like the little kind of bar that you get on both sides. So if this is in the green, it's going to be pretty much invisible and you can see that it's a very flat seam. It's not um, too three-dimensional even though you're going around the stitches it doesn't really stick out that much. So it's a really nice seam. It works up really quickly and it's a pretty sturdy seam. Um, but that's how you're going to whip stitch along the V. Okay, so if you need to work along the bumpy edge of your project, this um, join is very easy also. You just do the same thing. You just start working around and around. Find a good spot to put your needle where you can get some nice loops. As many or as few as you want. The le the the smaller amount of loops that you catch, the less visible the seam will be, because obviously if you start catching way down here, you're going to have a funny looking seam, and it's going to be quite visible. So try to just catch a top loop as best you can. But same thing, you're just going to go over and over and over, and then when you flip it to the outside, you get kind of the same effect, just little bars. You won't have that nice V bar edge that you have with a normal stitch, but it still keeps a pretty flat butted up stitch. So you can use whip stitch just about anywhere. If you have any questions, leave them below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And thank you for watching.